Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. In a major setback to President Trump, the U.S. Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals has refused to reinstate Trump's ban on all refugees and citizens of six majority Muslim nations from entering the United States. In the majority decision, Chief Judge Roger Gregory wrote that Trump's executive order uses, quote, vague words of national security, but in context drips with religious intolerance, animus and discrimination. Quote. The Justice Department's vowed to challenge the appeals court ruling and take it to the Supreme Court. In Montana, Republican tech millionaire Greg Gianforte has won a special election for the state's sole congressional seat a day after he was charged with assaulting a reporter. Gianforte won just over 50 percent of the vote, defeating Democratic challenger Rob Quist to receive 44 percent. On Wednesday, Gianforte body slammed Guardian reporter Ben Jacobs to the floor and repeatedly punched him after Jacobs tried to ask about the Republican health care plan. Forte addressed the incident during his victory speech last night. Last night I made a mistake. And I took an action that I can't take back. And I'm not proud of what happened. I should not have responded in the way that I did. And for that, I'm sorry. And you're forgiven. We love you. More than $6 million was spent by outside groups in Montana's special election. Ninety percent of the money favored Gianforte. The Washington Post reporting President Trump's son-in-law and influential advisor, Jared Kushner, has become a focus of the investigation into Russia's meddling in the 2016 election. According to the Post, investigators are focusing on meetings Kushner had with the Russian ambassador, Sergei Kislyak, and the head of a Russian bank, which had been under U.S. sanctions. The Post reports Kushner is the only current White House official known to be considered a key person in the FBI probe. President Trump met with NATO leaders in Brussels Thursday and accused certain member countries of owing massive amounts of money to the U.S. and NATO. 23 of the 28 member nations are still not paying what they should be paying and what they are supposed to be paying for their defense. This is not fair to the people and taxpayers of the United States. Under NATO rules, state contributions are considered voluntary. Meanwhile, Trump made headlines in Brussels when he was videotaped, apparently shoving the prime minister of Montenegro in order to get to the front of the group of world leaders. In news from Egypt, at least 24 Coptic Christians have died after gunmen opened fire on a bus heading to a monastery south of Cairo. The attack comes less than two months after 46 people died in a pair of bombings and targeting Coptic churches. In other news from Egypt, the government has blocked access to many news sites, including Al Jazeera, Huffington Post Arabic and Mata Nasser, which is the leading independent news outlet in Egypt. In Britain, an eighth arrest has been made in connection to Monday's suicide bombing in Man Manchester that killed 22 people. This comes as investigators are attempting to piece together the recent whereabouts of the suspected bomber Salman Abidi, who died in the blast. Authorities believe the Manchester-born man was recently in Libya and then traveled back to Britain via Turkey and Germany. Abidi's sister said she believed he carried out the bombings as revenge for the wars in the Middle East. She said, quote, I think he saw children, Muslim children, dying everywhere and wanted revenge, unquote. The Manchester bombings come just weeks before British voters head to the polls for a general election. Earlier today, British Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn said there's a link between foreign policy and the growing terror threat. We must be brave enough to admit that the war on terror is not working. We need a smarter way to reduce the threat from countries that nurture terrorists and generate terrorism. Meanwhile, in Syria, U.S.-led coalition airstrikes have reportedly killed at least 35 civilians, including five children in the eastern town of Mayadeen. According to the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, the strikes hit a series of residential buildings. The Pentagon's admitted in a new report at least 105 Iraqi civilians died in U.S. airstrikes in Mosul in March, making it one of the deadliest U.S. bombings of the war. But U.S. Central Command blamed the high death toll on explosives that militants from Islamic State were storing in the targeted building. The Pentagon's death estimate is far lower than previous counts. Iraqi civil defense forces initially put the death toll at 278 
civilians. On Capitol Hill, bipartisan resolutions have been introduced in the Senate and House to block President Trump's $110 billion Saudi arms deal. The Senate bill was introduced by Republican Senator Rand Paul and Democrats Chris Murphy and Al Franken. In a statement, Senator Paul said, quote, given Saudi Arabia's past support of terror, good, poor human rights record and questionable tactics in its war in Yemen, Congress must carefully consider and thoroughly debate if selling them billions of dollars of arms is in our best national security interest at this time, he said. And while President Trump was visiting Brussels on his first European trip as president, Barack Obama spoke in Berlin Thursday. He never mentioned Trump by name, but said countries should not hide behind walls. He also expressed concern that progress made on health care reform in the United States will soon be rolled back. Certainly, I have some regrets that we weren't able to get everyone health care, and obviously some of the progress that we made was is now imperiled, because there's still a significant debate taking place in the United States. But the point, though, is, is that for those 20 million people, their lives have been better. And we've set a standard of what's possible that people can then build on. Obama's remarks came a day after the Congressional Budget Office said the new Republican health care plan would cause 23 million people to lose their health care by 2026. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Today, we spend the hour looking